Hey, good morning. Welcome and thanks for joining us for another Sunday on Renew Church Online. Uh, if you're sitting at home joining us, I hope you're comfortable. I hope you're ready to put the week behind you and just join us in, in some worship and in some teaching. We're actually in the final week of our Win the Battle of Your Mind series this week. So I hope you've been getting a lot out of it and enjoying it and tracking along and doing the reading plans and everything else that we've sent out to you through this. But I want to also look a little bit ahead because next week we're having actually a Vision Sunday. So you'll want to tune in or join us live at Hope because we're going to be talking a little bit about the future of Renew Church, what the next few months are going to look like, what the new vision is moving forward. We've been obviously through a lot of change, so this is going to be a, a pretty important Sunday just to get reconnected and, and recalibrate all of our minds to where we're headed uh, as the, the weeks and months progress into the fall and into the winter. So I would invite you to watch that online or again join us live at Hope Church Mississauga at 4 p.m. And if you have young kids, you'll especially want to be there because we have an awesome kids program planned for them. They're going to have a fall festival with lots of games, lots of fun. They'll be taking a break from their usual curriculum just to have a good time. And if they have a, a costume that's family friendly, that's non-scary, they're welcome to wear it. There's going to be a little photo booth, so it's going to be great. Uh, we just ask you to register ahead of time because we need to plan for numbers. So please register online or on the Renew Church app, and we would absolutely love to see you there. Now, in between Sundays, I want to tell you about a few things that have been going on and continue to go on in the next uh, few weeks. First off, we have a number of different groups for different ages. We have a young adults group called Society, and you may not be aware of this, but they meet every, every week, Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. in Milton. So if you are a young adult and you want to get connected with uh, a few other people in the church, then we would love to have you join in to the Society group. All you have to do is get in touch with us through our website or through our app. Just fill in a little connect card, say, hey, I'm interested in Society and we would love to connect you with the leaders over there and they can give you all the details of where and when they meet and, and you can join in. Uh, same with Maverick Youth. We have a youth program for junior high and senior high that happens every Tuesday evening at St. Jude's Academy in Mississauga. They get together at 6.30 p.m. and have a great time with some fun, some games, some learning, some worship. Uh, so if you have a, a student in junior high or senior high who's not already connected, again, Connect with us through our online connect cards on the app or on the website, and we'd love to get them plugged in. If you are connected, then you'll be getting the emails uh, every week to register your student to attend, and we hope to see them there. And then for our adults, our Renew groups uh, are up and running. These are community groups in all four of our campuses in Cambridge, Caledon, Mississauga, and Milton. We've got groups of adults who meet on a weekly basis. They get together for, for food, for fellowship, to hang out, to study God's word, to pray together, to encourage each other, and, and just build Build each other up, and it's a great time. Some of them have been meeting online, but a number are back to meeting in person. So if you're not already connected with a Renew group, we'd love to have you again join into that. And again, just all the same means of connecting with us. Go on the website, go on the app, look for that connect form, and you can just fill that in and let us know, and one of our pastors will follow up with you. Uh, if you're uh, uh, consider a Renew Church your home and you want to continue to give to Renew Church, all the same means of giving uh, still exist online. Uh, you can give by EFT, you can give through our app now as well, or you can do it in person if you're coming in on a Sunday to our, our in-person meetings at uh, Hope Church. We do have a donation box there available as well, and you can get all the info for that on our website as well. Just look for the Give tab in the menu, and you can get all the details and, and connect with that. And lastly, I just do want to remind you, again, you've heard me mention a few times that we have a new app. Uh, download that. Please go ahead and get it. It's for both Google and for Apple. So just download it from the Google, um, Google Play Store or the Apple Store and get that on your phone because it's got lots and lots of stuff in there and we're adding to it all the time. It's got all your news. It's got all the videos. It's got, you know, registration for events and things that are coming up. And so it's going to be a really useful thing for us moving forward. And in fact, we're starting to use it for our in-person services on Sundays. So so you can register to attend, meaning ahead of time we need to have you kind of reserve your seat and, and because we do have limited numbers, so you can do that through the app. You can reserve your seat. But then when you show up, we'll also be able to check you in. So rather than scratching you off a list, we'll just check you in on the app, which is really cool because we get a, a good idea of numbers and who's coming, and, and it just helps us plan our services and, and plan our time together that much better. So we hope you'll get connected with that. And if you have any questions, just contact us, and we'd be happy to help walk you through that. But I think once you download it, you'll find it's really easy and, and has a lot of great information. So that's what I've got for you this week for announcements. Let's take a moment to pray before we move in to our service. Lord Jesus, we're here just to thank you, to praise you, and just to spend time with you. Uh, this is the best thing that we can do. We're, we're, we're talking about winning the battle of our minds and just time with you, fellowshipping with you, allowing you into our lives, God, is, is the greatest thing that we can do. 
And so we just pray that this time would be a blessing to those watching. We pray that this time would just honor you and, and lift you up and help us to reorient our hearts to you as well. And so, God, we just pray that you would, um, you would just fill us with your spirit right now. Open our hearts, calm us, uh, clear our minds, help us to focus, and just help us to see who you truly are. Help us to focus on the things that truly matter and uh, help us to learn from your word this morning as we dive in deeper into this, this topic of winning the battle of our minds. And so, God, we, we thank you so much and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
This morning's scripture is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 to 14. Please read along with me. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raises Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. I am a child of God. My God goes before me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapons formed against me will prosper. My present suffering pales in comparison to my future glory. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. My God knows my name. Even though I will still be joyful and glad because the Lord God is my Savior. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Welcome back to the finale of Win the Battle of Your Mind. It's been a great series. Much thanks to Pastor Louis Giglio for sharing his knowledge and research with us. We encourage you to continue to share the messages that you can find online at our website, renewchurch.ca. Today, we're going to wrap it up with the topic of the Garden of Your Mind, week six, the Garden of Your Mind. Now, before the pandemic started, our family got a dog. True story. Now, it's old news now, but how the Swatskis were completely anti-dog people is kind of popular knowledge. We are now the sappiest dog lovers around, except maybe for Kathy Baranowski. Shout out to Kathy. Um, but I got to tell you guys, I cannot get enough of my little pug Boston Terrier mix, Coda. She's beautiful. We walk her two to three times a day, once in a while, we spoil her and we'll let her off of her leash if there aren't too many people or dogs around in our little park across the street from our house. We also have a woodlot across the street. And on the far end of that woodlot, back in the woods, a neighbor likes to dump organic compost. It could be anything from like pieces of bread to vegetable peelings. Sometimes some meat scraps get mixed in there with bones, chicken bones and stuff. And here's the thing, our dog knows that it's there. And so we've always got to be really careful when we let her off her leash because she could go back there and eating that could be really bad for her. But here's the thing. She is so drawn to it. And whenever we let her off her leash, she'll look over at the woods and she'll get that look in her eyes. And you can see that she's wrestling with her thoughts in that little dog brain of hers. 
She's thinking, I know I'm not supposed to go there. I know mom and dad are going to get angry. Yes, we're mom and dad. If they just look away for a second, you know, I could maybe make my break. And then, bam, she's gone and she's off into the woods. Her canine instincts are just too powerful to resist when there's food like that in the woods. Have you ever been stuck in a moment like that? We've been talking about our minds, and as we come to the end of this series, maybe you are still stuck with a thought or an attitude that has just this powerful pull on you. You know, maybe it's a faulty concept of who you are as a person. Maybe you just can't break free from a temptation, or you're having a hard time forgiving, but you're stuck, and you know you're stuck in a destructive pattern, a destructive rut. Well, hopefully you're recognizing that these ruts can start to actually become more than just a rut. They can start to define your whole life. And so, guys, pay attention to this fact. The battle for your life is fought and won in your mind. This whole series is about the fact that you can actually change your life for good by changing the way that you think and changing your mind. See, the Bible teaches that God is here with us in our story. And because he is here with us, we are assured the victory. We kind of talked about that in that D-Day plus one concept a couple weeks ago. But Satan still wants to trip trip us up. He wants to render us ineffective in our lives. The book of Romans gives us great insight into managing our minds. Look at what it says here in Romans chapter 8 verse 6. It says, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. You know, instead of set on, as it says here in some translations, they use the word controlled, the mind controlled by, or the mind governed by. In other words, the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. And it's the idea that we can actually give control of our minds to someone else who will give it a good direction. A governor is something or someone that controls, right? We usually think of the political governors, But on go-karts or golf carts, right, they put this thing called a governor. It's an attachment that limits the speed of the machine and actually keeps it in check. And that's actually a pretty good picture of how the Spirit of God wants to be holding the reins of our minds and keeping them in check. Well, here's the question. How do we give the Spirit that control of our minds? I want to talk for a bit here this morning about the mindset that leads to life. The way that you go about stopping the enemy from sitting at your table is by winning the battle of your mind. And winning the battle of your mind means replacing old harmful thoughts with new life-giving thoughts. I hope that you enjoyed uh, those little verses and power thoughts that Pastor Merrick was sending out uh, a couple weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I used the illustration of a lawn, and I want to continue with that idea today as we talk about your mind as being kind of like a garden. Your mind is something that you cultivate. And if you cultivate it well, it will be the source of beauty, of creativity, of peace, of enjoyment, all of the things that the best gardens are. You know, growing up, we learn how to maintain all kinds of things, right? When you start driving a car, you learn you got to change the oil. You change the oil in your car every 10,000 kilometers or so. You fertilize the water, Uh, fertilize and water your lawn. In order to maintain your lawn, you learn that you have to paint your house if it's a house that requires paint, that you have to change the shingles on your roof every 15 years or so. We just changed the shingles on our roof this year. But here's the sad truth, guys. No one ever teaches us how to maintain our mind. Very rarely. You're a very lucky person if you had someone that taught you this. See, we take care of physical things, but we haven't been taught how to take care and to protect something that's way more valuable than that, and we're talking about our minds. Years ago, Christians had certain habits and disciplines that really helped with the mind. I want you to think of some of these things. Church, just being on every Sunday, just a non-negotiable thing. Our family goes to church every Sunday, right? Having a quiet time every morning with God where we're praying, where we're reading our Bible, right? Just making a habit of that. Taking a strict, a strict Sabbath, right? Strict Sabbath keeping. I remember when I was a kid, we didn't do anything on Sundays. And that, you know, threw a wrench into a lot of things. I played hockey and stuff. I would never play on Sundays. Um, it was complicated, but I have to say there was some real value to just always knowing that that was a day of rest. That was a day where we were just stopping everything. And it was something that contributed to good mental health. Bedtime prayers, especially confession, you know, 
uh, praying before you go to bed and especially taking the time to do inventory and how did your day go and confessing any known sin that you have in your life and in your heart. These are wonderful habits that used to just be commonplace in the Christian life. In our modern world, many Christians have dropped these habits, unfortunately. And I would encourage people to get back to these habits and, um, and add other good habits to this as well. Because these habits help us not to conform to worldly patterns that will destroy our minds and in turn destroy our lives. Look at what it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. We've discussed the fact that Satan wants to drop bad seed in our gardens, right? That illustration of the lawn or the garden where the seed is floating in there. He wants to fill our minds with materialism, with violence, with lust, with greed, so that we not only plant but cultivate harmful seeds in our gardens. This is what Satan's up to all of the time. If he can succeed, do you see what happens here? According to this verse, it says that his weeds take over our minds and keep us from even being able to see and discern God's will on a day-to-day basis, that we can't test and approve what his good and perfect will is. That's serious stuff, guys. That's basically saying that we become spiritually confused. In John chapter 15, Jesus spoke along these thoughts when he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And see, Satan understands this, that apart from Christ, you can do nothing of spiritual value. So Satan is trying to separate our minds from the life of God. He wants our minds to be governed by our own fleshly desires instead of by the Spirit's desires. And Pastor Mitch read all about that this morning. His goal is to render us spiritually useless. And guys, I see a lot of spiritually useless Christians. They know how to work. They know how to feed their kids. They know how to take care of their house. They know how to kind of just keep moving through life. But they really can't see what God is doing around them. It's like they have spiritual blinders on. They aren't tuned into people's pain and their loneliness, their need for faith. They aren't thinking about what God is trying to do in the world or in their neighborhood, what's important to God and what's on His heart. And so I want to challenge you today to be committed to new disciplines for renewing your mind. Louis Giglio here in his book encourages people just to start small and to begin just by choosing one thought every day to meditate on. Start planting good seed in the garden of your mind. And Louis actually ends his book with seven statements, each one backed up by scripture, and he encourages people to memorize these seven steps and even the verses that go along with them. And so what I want to do is I want to end this series with these seven thoughts, and you might want to write them down if you have a pen and paper. Here we go. The first one, I am in God's story. Guys, the story of who you are is a part of a much bigger story, and you have to get a hold of this. The story of your life is not about you, but you are invited to play a part in God's story, and this is the wonderful thing. You have a seat at God's table. In fact, before God made you in your mother's womb, he knew you, and he knows the part that he wants you to be playing in his story, just as he knew for the people of Israel that they had a part in his story. In Jeremiah chapter 29, he reminds them of this. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And guys, this is consistent with God's character across the board, whether he's talking about the nation of Israel or us as individuals. Your ultimate meaning doesn't come from putting the spotlight on you yourself, You will realize your greatest significance as you see and live out your part in God's story. So that's the first thought you want to embed in there. I'm part of God's story. Secondly, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This is an amazing thought that you want to plant in your mind. You weren't just born by a random act of the cosmos, as much as your teachers may have taught you that. You were made in God's image to fulfill God's purposes. And your life has true and eternal meaning intrinsic to it. In Psalm 139, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. So guys, we see from that verse, you are unique. 
You are special and valuable. You need to plant that seed of truth in your mind. The third one is this. My life has purpose. Guys, you were born for a noble reason. God has good things for you to do in your life. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are God's handiwork. That word, that word can actually be translated as masterpiece. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Did you know that God had plans for your life before he even created the world? You have a unique calling, and God wants you to find that calling and to fulfill that calling as part of his bigger story. You have a part to play in his story. The fourth thing is that the cross has the final word. Embed that thought into your mind. The work that Jesus did on the cross is what defines your life as a child of God. His death and resurrection give you victory over death. You remember earlier in the series, we said Satan wants to define you by your scars, but Jesus wants to define you by his scars. Such a great statement. You were so loved by Jesus that he died on the cross for you. And he has forgiven you. He's justified you. And he is sanctifying you even as you are listening to me here today. You are part of God's great family. All of this is true because of the cross. Everything becomes new because of the cross. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. The fifth thing that Louis says here that you want to plant in your mind is this idea, I serve at the pleasure of the king. It's a great thought. You know, the work of Jesus actually transforms your work. You don't merely work at a job. Think about this. You don't merely work at a job. You serve Jesus, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So I want you to take this thought to work with you every day. And Louis actually writes this in his book, and he's made a point of memorizing this and playing it over in his mind. He says, I am dispatched by the Holy Spirit on kingdom assignments to be light in a darkened world so others can see Jesus. What a great purpose statement, right? You serve at the pleasure of your king, and this is why you're here. You're dispatched by the Holy Spirit on kingdom assignments to be light in a darkened world so others can see Jesus. Wouldn't that be great if we left the house every day thinking that way? It is God's business, guys, that defines your life. Your true vocation is a spiritual one. You are not building someone else's company. You are building the invisible and eternal kingdom of God. This is what God's word teaches us. In 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter reminds us of this. He says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The sixth idea is that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is my Lord. Now remember, That God is stronger than anything or anyone. He is worthy of all praise. The Bible says that he is the great king and that his kingdom is forever. That means that his plans are guaranteed to come to pass, guys. You, you You can't thwart God's plans. Nothing that happens in the world surprises God or alarms him. And guess what? That includes your struggles that you're going through. And even in our darkest darkest valleys, There is always hope. There is always victory available for us. Look at what it says in Philippians chapter 2. Therefore God exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul says that every tongue is someday going to acknowledge Jesus' kingship. So let's introduce people to him now, guys, so they can start enjoying the life that they were meant to enjoy in God's kingdom today. The last one, number seven, is this thought. My God turns evil into good. It's a great thought. You know, life doesn't always work out the way that you hope. We are living in a broken planet. But our God is a redeeming God. He takes broken things and he makes them work again. And no matter what hardship you're going through, He is able to use it for good. I hope that you're seeing this in your life. No matter how hopeless your situation may seem, it isn't because God is still with us. And God's good purposes will come to fruition in the world. 
So stay close to him. Just stay close to him. And stop stressing over your situation. Just trust him to take you through. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, a famous passage that's great to memorize. It says, We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. There's a lot of terrible things in the world, but God can still make them work toward good ends as we trust in him. Let me wrap it up today with just a little story. I actually met a man this week who I hadn't seen in over 20 years. 20 years. He and his wife briefly attended our church when we were first getting started, way back when. And she contacted the church out of the blue this week and let me know that her husband actually has cancer and only has probably around a month to live. It's very sobering news. So I went to visit him at the oncology unit at Credit Valley on Wednesday. Now, she professes no faith of any kind. Uh, He had a church background, but uh, you can tell that it wasn't really that formative for him. His ideas about God are still kind of a mishmash of his own ideas with some biblical ones. A little bit of Star Wars probably mixed in there somewhere. Among other things, he's bought into the fallacy that all religions lead to God. And a number of people have latched onto that idea. It's not a biblical idea. Well, I knew that he was a financial planner, so I tried to speak his language a little bit and tried to explain things to him. I tried to help him see that Jesus is really the best investment option that is out there as you're thinking about investing your life and your eternity. I said, let's forget about all of the other religions out there for a second. Um, Just like when you invest people's money, you need to make a choice. And so let's get you to the most important question, and that is, Which is the best investment option for your life? Which has the most proven track record? Which is most convincing? Which has the best prospects for the future? As you do your analysis, which one do you see as being the best? And I was trying to show him that Jesus is the best spiritual investment option. His teaching changed the world like no other person in history. He alone proved that he had, you know, that he was God by his power over nature and most of all his power over death. I think that anyone facing death needs to give strong consideration to the only one who ever had power over death. That just makes sense. Guys, if you aren't convinced that Jesus is the best spiritual investment option yet, just send us a message via the Connect card before the day is over. We would love to connect with you and to do a short study with you that I think you will find very convincing. The second thing I tried to do as I visited this gentleman was just to try to help him see that faith is the currency that you invest with spiritually, right? Faith is spiritual currency. You see, in the physical world, we use money. We used to always just use cash. Now we have other means of paying. But, you know, in the spiritual world, faith is the only currency. It is what gets you the things that you need and want. In Hebrews chapter 11, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him, right? The reward is like the transaction. You can't get that transaction unless you have faith. In the New Testament, we see poor people, sick people, helpless people coming to Jesus. And here's the deal. Whenever they had faith, they got what they came looking for. Do you see the transaction? Faith is God's currency. Guys, you need to understand, faith is what moves the hand of God. It really is. And because God values it so much, He makes us use it before he starts to move, right? You have to pay before you get what you're paying for. And some of you are waiting for God to do something about your situation, and God is saying, well, hey, it's your move. It's your move. Exercise faith, and you'll get what you're looking for. Some of you are waiting for him to alleviate your depression. You're waiting for him to calm your anxiety. You're waiting for him to give you the peace that you've been looking for for so long in your heart. But he is waiting for you to act in faith so that he can then unleash his power, his spiritual power that we read about this morning. Winning the battle of your mind requires faith. It means acting on what you know to be true. It means making the first move. That's what faith is, making the first move. Kicking the enemy away from your table. Shutting down envy and unforgiveness and lust and things like this. It means taking every thought captive, binding it in Jesus' name. We talked a lot about that in this series. 
eliminating bad influences on your mind and filling your mind with good things. That's the Tenerpli app that we talked about. Memorizing scripture, filling your head with good things, becoming the DJ of your own mind and thoughts, surrendering yourself to God and to his spirit, and letting him be the governor of your mind, the one who takes the reins of your mind, and reinstituting good disciplines in your life that will renew your mind on a regular, habitual basis. Guys, your mind is a garden that needs to be cultivated. If you don't change the oil in your car, one of these days it's going to come to a grinding halt. My son Jacob, are you listening? Change your oil. If you don't reshingle your roof, one day the water is going to come pouring in on you. And guys, if you don't learn a regimen for renewing your mind, the enemy will quickly overgrow your garden with the weeds of doubt and fear and discouragement and anxiety and everything that plagues your mind. And if he can destroy your mind, here's the deal, he will destroy your life. Don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Please talk to us this week, guys. We're here to help. And every desire is now
Hey guys, thanks for joining us this Sunday morning. If you guys have any questions about what was talked about today or any questions about Renew Church, please connect with us, uh, renewchurch.ca slash connect, or you can fill out a connect card that's linked below. Um, what a series. That was great. It was really awesome to be uh, just in our minds, feel like they're healthier. It feels like we've, um, we really are equipped now to, to win the battle of our mind and we have a better understanding of who's at our table and who we have to remove from our table. Uh, and next week, since the series is over, we actually have a vision message, which is going to be super awesome. So bring all of your friends out, bring your family out. It's going to be great. And bring your kids because there is a fall festival for kids next week. And that is going to be super awesome. Uh, it's going to be sweet. Kids are going to be able to wear their costumes. Uh, so it's going to be really cute as well. Just make sure they're family friendly costumes. That's the only thing. Um, so if you've got a bunch of kids, you can do the seven dwarves. Super cool. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it for this weekend. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you.